A seed is, a fully, is fully programmed to become the plant that it's intended to be, but it has to have the right conditions in order to develop. Some seedlings we know struggle with poor soil and lack of enough sunlight and water, and if these conditions persist, the seedling is damaged and it will not become the plant that it was intended to be. But if you enrich the soil, provide water and sunshine, the plant has it within itself to recover and even to flourish, just like the kids who come to PEP. This strength-based approach really defines our work. It's why we found synergy with the appreciative inquiry model developed by Case Western Reserve University's own David Cooperider. Thanks to the expansive generosity of the Fowler Family Foundation, PEP had the unique opportunity to hold an appreciative inquiry summit led by David Cooperider himself. We came together for two and a half days, a community of 240 people that included PEP leaders, board members, direct service staff, parents, past students, and community partners. Our core summit task was defined as thinking beyond the possible for our kids, envisioning positive futures, embracing innovation, empowering our people. Having the summit allowed us to better define our North Star, if you will, so that we could chart our course through the emerging future with clarity regarding our shared vision and knowledge of what the community expects and needs from us. Like others in the community mental health and special education realm, we're facing some daunting challenges. And the AI approach continues to inform our work. And thanks to the Outcult Family Foundation, we applied this process to focus on the vast changes that are coming to behavioral health services in Ohio. Engaging a cross-section of our staff in a design challenge, we tasked them with reimagining models and structures for our day treatment program. Uh, under the new funding and regulatory realities. And as a result, this approach has seeded innovation and we are piloting several new models of service that we believe will enhance the experience for our kids and their families. Now, this is not to say any of this is easy, far from it, it's just the opposite. But taking these turns with an appreciative eye allows us to discover positive opportunities and helps us to cultivate our resilience as an organization. So that's why we're excited to have Roberta Baskin here as our keynote speaker, as she's a person whose path has taken an appreciative turn from her storied career targeting corporate misconduct. As executive director of Aim to Flourish, she's now helping students around the world discover and share untold positive stories about business innovations for good. Through this initiative, she's helping achieve the United Nations global goals for sustainable development. Roberta brings an impressive resume to this challenge. She's an award-winning journalist who has won more than 75 journalism awards, including the prestigious Peabody's DuPont Columbia Awards and multiple Emmys. She has served as the executive director of the Center for Public Integrity, the senior investigative producer for 2020 and chief investigative correspondent for the CBS News Magazine, 48 Hours. Please join me in welcoming Roberta Baskin. Oh, wow, what a great crowd. And um, I want to thank you, Frank Fesser, Pep's fearless executive director, for that warm intro. And I love the whole idea of planting seeds and reaching for the stars. I am positively delighted to be here at this Pep rally. And I'm so honored to give a Pep talk. Not that you need one. I mean, that inspiring video that we just watched is um, something that can teach me a lot. PEP is a model program for Cleveland and for America and for the world. And I want to share a story about one of my personal heroines in American history that I think has a lot of resonance for what goes on with PEP every day. She was a writer, and she wrote this, quote, no pessimist ever discovered the secret of the stars or sailed to an uncharted land or opened a new doorway for the human spirit. That was Helen Keller. And Helen Keller was born in Alabama in, the 18, in 1880. As a deaf and blind child in the 1880s, you'd imagine that she would be written off. As famously shown in that film, The Miracle Worker, Helen was a troubled and unruly child. 
but she was blessed with a teacher who believed in her, Anne Sullivan. And that deaf and blind and troubled child went on to graduate from Radcliffe and serve humanity. Helen Keller's passport listed her as a writer, and the Helen Keller archives list, they have over 475 speeches and essays and her incredible autobiography. She socialized with the likes of Eleanor Roosevelt, Albert Einstein, Henry Ford. She met with many presidents over her 88 years, from Grover Cleveland to John F. Kennedy and she globetrotted for months at a time. And this is all in the, in the 1880s, 90s, you know, another time. And in fact, General Douglas MacArthur sent her to Japan after World War II as America's first goodwill ambassador, where up to two million people turned out to see this extraordinary woman who had been a troubled child. Helen Keller was honored with many awards and doctoral degrees, including from Harvard University. And she actually got an honorary Academy Award for inspiring the film, The Miracle Worker. And at the end of her life, the Lions Club gave her the Humanitarian Award for her lifetime service to humanity. And Helen Keller said, optimism is the faith that leads to achievement Nothing can be done without hope and confidence, something all of you in this room know. And that's what I admire most about Pep's service to the Cleveland community, its profound optimism, hope, confidence in its troubled kids to reach for the stars. We would never know about this brilliant woman, Helen Keller, had it not been for her optimistic, determined, compassionate, miracle worker of a teacher, Anne Sullivan. PEP is a program of miracle workers. You are re-educating your community and beyond because of you, you have success that is proven. You provide hope and opportunity for PEP's kids to be their best and achieve a brighter future. And at the heart of PEP's little miracles is its core belief in a strength-based positive approach to each child. So this idea of optimism and positivity, it's not one that I embraced for the first 30 years of my career as an investigative journalist. In fact, I bounded out of bed in the morning to uncover misdeeds, corruption, unethical behavior, especially corporate misconduct. I was passionate about telling you what's wrong in business. In fact, the television crews I worked with had a nickname for me. They called me Bad News Baskin. <laughs> Bad News for short. And I'm not apologizing for that work. I mean, it changed laws, it sent villains to prison, and on a good day, it changed corporate behavior for the better. But I do apologize for contributing to that sense that many of you may feel about the news. Enough already. Tell me something good about the world and the people like you who are in it. About 12 years ago, I was invited to Case Western Reserve University. Hello, table 33, wherever you are. Yes! <laughs> yes, uh, Case Western Reserve University shares in investing in, in its youth in this community and beyond. And that experience of taking David Cooperwriter's class was a life-altering experience for me. And maybe Professor David Cooperwriter was tired of seeing my bad news. He offered me a scholarship to come to Case in Cleveland and take his first certification class in appreciative inquiry. It's that thing that is essentially, it's just part of PEP's DNA. It's what comes naturally to you. It's a strength-based search for what works, what's right, what inspires an organization, a community, a company, a family, a child. It was a transformational experience for me. And, you know, I wondered, you know, where are those news stories? And I'm not talking about so-called happy news either. That's not what this is about. It is possible to tell a story about a challenge that a community is facing and not leave them with despair. 
instead providing a sense of possibility, of hope, resilience, opportunity, even inspiration. Ten years after that appreciative inquiry class, Professor Cooperwriter invited me to come back to Case Western Reserve University to work within the Fowler Center for Business as an Agent of World Benefit. Imagine Bad News Baskin entering the sanctuary of the opposite construct inside the Fowler Center for Business as an Agent of World Benefit. All of you know how generous and passionate the Fowler family is about this beautiful green city on a blue lake. It's called Cleveland. And you're blessed with Holly Fowler Martin's leadership on your, on your PEP board and Char Fowler. I think Char is in the room. Where are you, Char, my dear friend? Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, the Fowlers care deeply about Cleveland, but they also care deeply about the wider world and, and making the world a better place. So using the tools of appreciative inquiry, David Cooperwriter and I held a mini design summit, as it's called, at the third global forum in October 2014. And the idea was to imagine how we might find and celebrate businesses around the world, companies who are innovating for the greater good from Cleveland all the way around the planet. And we asked, where are these untold stories? Who is behind them? How might we find them? And at the end of the summit, the room was just supercharged. It was like a pep rally. I remember Nadja, our facilitator, was literally standing on a chair. And um, there was just a lot of excitement around it. And the initiative that we began designing involved working with business school professors around the world to send their students out like detectives to find these companies and teach the students how to do appreciative inquiry interviews with the CEOs and the business leaders and write them up for, our, for a website that we had yet to design. One of the people in the room was the executive secretariat for, a, for the United Nations Global Compact Office, and bear with me, it's something called PRIME, Principles for Responsible Management Education. And he challenged us, invited us to come to a UN conference just seven and a half months from then to launch a pilot project. It was a big dream. Run a workshop at the, at the UN about what we discovered, and we hadn't discovered anything yet. So not much time to coordinate with business school professors, send out students, design a website, edit and publish their stories. Pep people, you know what that's like. You know, you're reaching for the stars. Well, I asked volunteers um, at the workshop um, at the end of it, and about 20 hands shot up. And a few of them were business school professors. One of them was a business writer, Claire Summer, who became my right-hand volunteer. Um, or left hand, because we're both left-handed. And Claire's now full-time in what has taken off as Aim to Flourish. And that first globally collaborative pilot pro project um, where we embraced the UN's sustainable development goals, these beautiful goals that are the organizing principle behind all of the stories that we publish on the website. Mind you, the global goals hadn't even been been voted on yet by the United Nations when we embrace them, but we knew that this is what the world needs. So we asked business professors from Indonesia all the way to Argentina to send their students out to find innovations that are aligned with these beautiful goals. Three months after our workshop, all 193 nation states unanimously voted to ratify the global goals. It was the first time that the world pledged to achieve something all together. It's like the world's to-do list for 2030. And um, everybody came together and voted to accomplish something very ambitious. And we have only 13 years to go. So just like PEP, we knew that celebration is inspiring, so we set a goal last year in the hope of publishing 200 innovation stories from around the world on our new Aim to Flourish website. Amazingly, by the end of the year, we had published 422 stories. We asked our thought leaders, and these were members of the um, Fowler Center, um, the advisory board, and the distinguished Fowler fellows, to select from the 
422 stories, the 17 best of the best, the best innovations going on there globally that you have never heard of. We will be celebrating with 17 Flourish Prizes, one for each one of the global goals, at the fourth Global Forum at CASE on June 14th through 16th, and the Flourish Prize winning business leaders, professors, and students are coming from all over the world. So please join us. Please register for this amazing experience of the whole world coming together, using appreciative inquiry, and celebrating these awesome, inspiring stories found by business students of how business is helping to achieve the global goals. Our winners are coming from all over. You just have to come across town. And I have to say a special word of appreciation and congratulations to our honorees today. Um, A.J. Hyland, who I see next to, boy, is he fun. <laughs> what an amazing character. And Key Bank, uh, one of our, um, well, these are just incredibly generous community leaders in Cleveland who nurture Cleveland and beyond. Um, Cleveland is, I, I think of it as a renaissance city, really, that people, people need to know about. Um, and I am re really delighted that KeyBank is also a generous sponsor of the upcoming Fourth Global Forum and delighted to say that they are a sponsor for Global Goal 8. Which one is Global Goal 8? Decent work and economic growth. What a great idea. Aim to Flourish is now flourishing because Cleveland and Case Western Reserve University is a nurturing incubator and mothership for this. As of today, we have more than 2,500 profiles on Aim to Flourish. We have 519 innovation stories and more coming in every day. We have more than 100 professors globally. 35 of the, of the professors have made the Aim to Flourish experience a core curriculum requirement for their students. We've created resources and videos for these professors to teach their business students to be global goals ready leaders. And we're, we've created a global kind of cross-generational dialogue about how to achieve the global goals between these business students and these business leaders who are already doing something to try to achieve the global goals. So the 10-year-olds that PEP is working with right now will be 23 years old in 2030. Just imagine how beautiful the world can be by then when we achieve the global goals together. The strength-based learning that PEP leaders teach will help create the world that we all want. And I want to leave you with a final quote by Helen Keller. Quote, one can never consent to creep when one feels an impulse to soar. That is the impulse of PEP, the impulse to soar. And planting seeds every day, I want to thank you for this PEP model and flourishing program that nurtures our young people every day to reach for the stars. Thank you. <laughs> Roberta.